G'day, it's Rob here again. Uh, in this video I'm going to uh, show you the latest project. And uh, for those of you that uh, watch my video, some of you may know, uh, probably most won't know, that this actual, this poor old CQ9325 lay that I've got here, a few years ago was actually converted to DC. Uh, I used a uh, a DC motor from a junk treadmill with a uh, KBI electronics controller on it and it worked good for 12 months until I cooked the motor up uh, because I uh, overloaded it a bit yep I'm afraid I did and also it was pretty hot weather and anyway this time around I've got a, a heavy duty DC motor out of another treadmill and I'm gonna put it back on and uh, at the moment the motors the uh, lathes in AC mode and it's uh, just basically uh, the electrics are sort of jury rigged on it to keep it going but you can see on the control panel here the uh, trim pot for the uh, for the DC speed control that's still on the thing and uh, and up the top this time round in addition to the tachometer we've also got a temperature uh, gauge which I can monitor the, the motor so uh, that's pretty nifty actually, I'll put her on and you can see how it looks it's yeah, cheap to buy, just get off eBay and just put a put a probe on the mo in the motor airstream on the exhaust or on the motor and uh, I'll put in the airstream on the DC so I get an instant reading I don't want it running through the case so uh, yeah that's where we're at there well here's the new motor 1.5 horsepower heavy duty motor and you can see the uh, the air intake that I um, made up for it, I used the bullfinch once again to bronze braze that up and bend the metal and everything and uh, that's going to blow air in through the uh, one of the brush ports and you can see the, uh, the motor's in a cradle, it has to be in a cradle because the motor on my lathe is end mounted and uh, these motors are base mounted so I basically had to make up an end mount cradle for it to go in which it's the same cradle I used last time and the air just ports out through the front of the motor and here we have the power supply I'm going to use for the uh, for the air blower this time around which is the same unit you saw in the video where I was removing rust it's the Canon BJ uh, power pack from a Canon BJ printer and that's putting out a higher voltage than uh, 12 volts. Uh, I'll be using some computer fans once again, have a second try at using those. They sort of worked okay last time, but this time having the BJ um, power pack, the power pack puts out 17 or 18 volts, so I'm actually going to overdrive these computer fans and it makes quite a big difference, quite a big difference. So with them uh, running... Um, the measured voltage is uh, 15 volts, so it's yeah, it's tolerable. I think they'll stand up to it if they just go fizz. Well, that'll be um, too bad. I'll have to think of something else. But at least having the the uh, ex the separate um, uh, air blower, you know, running off of a hose, I can just swap over blowers if I need to. As I, if I find a better one, I'll uh, I'll put a better one on. And. Uh, this is some of the connection hose I'm going to use, so that will basically be the union between the the motor and the tubing. Here's the tubing down here. I would have preferred uh, smooth internal tubing, cut down for air friction, air drag, but that's all I could get that was flexible enough, so yeah, that's that part of it. Right, well here's the blower. It looks like some sort of uh, alien weapon but it's actually four computer uh, case fans two big ones with a separator between them and two smaller ones with a separator you put the separator between them to stop uh, uh, cut out beats effect you know you get beats where they do that 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 throbbing sound which is really annoying so it, it smooths out the airflow a bit and uh, and this is the um, the bit you would recognise from the last video that I made up where I used the bullfinch once again to bronze braze and uh, at the back of that, between that and the end plate, there's an O-ring so it's all sealed 
with an O-ring and uh, yeah, all pretty cool. I hope it all works out. Over here we have the pulley I'm going to use, which is just a, it's one out of the junk tin, or my pulley box. Uh, this is a different size shaft to the pulley I had for the last motor, so that'll do for now. So that's, uh, that's that. Now we're going to have a look at the, the existing electrical system at the back of the motor, <laughs> which is uh, um, in sort of uh, in-between mode, shall we say. Well, here's the back of the lathe, and you can see the uh, the KBI Electronics uh, DC uh, inverter controller in the uh, old PC power supply case. There's a few wires <laughs> randomly hanging around because I'm in sort of jury rig mode. It's uh, been put back into AC mode, but uh, I've still got everything there ready to go for DC mode and. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't say it's actually uh, electrically um, safe. I don't think it would meet the Oak Health and Safety Standards. So I don't think that uh, an Arnott's, Arnott's Nature Cheese shaped packet is really good insulation or suitable insulation for uh, meeting the standards. Um, yeah, I had to put that over the uh, open fuse box because the, the odd metal chip went in there and uh, we had the odd flash and crackle and then the, the meter tripped out. But, you know, safety comes first with me always, as you can see here. And, of course, the reversing switch here. You've got to use uh, rubber gloves at the moment to use that because uh, otherwise you might electrocute yourself. But that's only a temporary measure. <laughs> so, anyway, it's all coming. The motor's coming out. I'm going to rewire the, reconnect all the, uh, the DC side of things. And in the next video, you can uh, hopefully see the poor old girl back in DC mode. Okay, that's it. Don't take it all too seriously. Um, but, yep, I do play safe with this stuff. I just uh, know what, what not to touch. <laughs> okay, see you next video.